What is up guys? This is Weasel for PokerVIP.com in association with William Hill Poker. We're going to be continuing our session on the 6 plus hold'em tables. Spinning up a couple of blinds so far. If you've seen the previous action you'll know. So we're doing okay. Game seemed very soft. People are doing some really bad stuff. And hopefully by now after watching the two videos you'll have an idea or should be beginning to form an idea regarding the basic concepts of how you can transition from no limit hold'em to playing six plus hold'em games. So we're going to pick up the action right where we left off. In terms of formulating ranges, now this is something that will be mentioned in the strategy video, the top tips that I'm going to make. So go and search for the video, maybe it's already out. But one of the things I'm going to talk about is how, given the format of the game is exactly the same as No Limit Hold'em, you know, the blinds are the same, the actions are the same, the way the button moves is the same, it's basically No Limit Hold'em, but there's only 6 plus in the deck now. So given that, the maths which ties the game together is exactly the same as the maths that governs No Limit Hold'em decisions. So for example, if you wanted to construct a button raise first in range, you can draw on your No Limit Hold'em experience to help you do that. So if, for example, you know, and hopefully you should know this, that what's considered a theoretically correct raise first in range on the button in No Limit Hold'em is a 48% opening range. And from the other positions, you know, cutoff maybe 26 to 28, MP 18%. You should know these things. These frequencies are going to be exactly the same in 6 plus Hold'em. So on the button, we should be opening 48% of all possible hands. Now, it just so happens that these are going to be slightly different hands because we're playing with a stripped deck. So there's going to be less cards in the deck overall, which means that a 48% range is going to be significantly tighter in 6 plus than it would be in regular Hold'em. So we have to keep that in mind. But the principles for designing the same range, for designing ranges, are exactly the same as they would be in No Limit Hold'em. So to give another example, let's say button comes in for a 2.5x open. We're in the big blind. We want to know what kind of range we should be co-calling. Again, we're not completely in the dark because we can draw on some of our No Limit Hold'em experience. So hopefully we know that against 2.5x open, we should be cold calling about a 31% range in the big blind. So once again, this is not going to be the same as a 31% range in 6 plus Hold'em. It's just that the frequency is going to be the same. So we have a look at all possible starting hands in 6 plus, which is going to be noticeably less. And we now just take 31% of those hands and defend that range instead. Another way of thinking about it is this, is whatever you play in No Limit Hold'em, you're going to be playing a slightly tighter range in 6+. plus. Now, it doesn't quite translate directly this way. If you just did this and just said, hey, okay, there's less cards in the deck, I'm going to play a tighter range in this spot, you wouldn't necessarily have the best 6+, plus hold'em strategy because there are a number of differences in terms of what constitutes a good hand in 6+, plus compared to what constitutes a good hand in No Limit Hold'em. So you have to keep in mind that things like flushes are way better in 6+. plus. Things like sets are way better in 6 plus as well. So we're going to construct our pre-flop range to allow us to make these hands more frequently and to make the dominated hands like straights, etc. and pairs and two-pair combos less frequently because these are the hands that carry reverse implied odds. This is especially important when we're playing with reasonable deep stacks. And you know, most people are going to be buying in with 100 big blinds. I mean, I can see there's a bunch of weaker players where if you look at table 1, for example, there are three guys with less than... 30 big blinds or so on the table. Actually, they have slightly more than 30 big blinds since we're playing 2 cents, 4 cents. So, you know, against these guys, you know, some of the hands which make, you know, top 2 pair, for example, or top pair, they're still going to do okay, just because it's a lot easier to stack off with a low stack to pot ratio post lot with these hands. Okay, anyway, let's focus on the action. So, we have pocket kings. Now, even in 6+, plus, kings is good enough for a raise. And with this effective stack depth, we should be stacking off very least against the first guy, probably against both guys, actually. Um, this team on guy has had a tendency to actually limp raise in the past. I'm just going to do a quick um, calculation here. I think 36 should be fine. 
Um, possibly can still shove the turn. We'll see what the card is first. There are more bad cards that can obviously come. You know, the, the turn is not going to be something like a deuce. You know, I'm not super excited about this turn card. You could have trip sevens, but I think that's literally the only way we can be beat right now. So I think um, shoving the rest of the money in is fine. Hope he doesn't have trip sevens. A7 offsuit. Again, I'm going to fold. Offsuit aces are not good hands in this game. Or is something like 10 7 suited? It's going to do okay. Probably should be an overcall in this scenario. Just keep in mind our, our goal, really, if we were to simplify the game as much as possible, our goal really is to make either a set or a flush. That's like the objective here if we were to really simplify it. So, King 10 from the small blind. It's a bit confusing as well because of his stack size, but this should be just slightly outside an opening range in this particular variant. Should be opening from the small blind Ace Jack offsuit plus, King Queen offsuit plus. And then a whole bunch of suited hands. In fact, most of the suited hands. But not all of them. We can still fold stuff like 9 6, 10 6, Jack 6, and Queen 6 suited. And again, this is not necessarily a proven correct way to open range. For example, you're in the small blind, you want to, wanted to say, for example, well, actually, I want to fold 6 8 suit and 7 9 suit and open Ace 10 offsuit instead. That's not something I can disprove. I don't think that's a correct range construction, but I can't disprove it. So I'm going to go for a small 3-bet with the Queen King of Clubs. It's, it's In Hold'em, it's a value 3-bet. In 6+, plus, it's more kind of a semi-bluff, get the pot heads up with initiative kind of thing. Um, we flop the backdoor draw, which is fine. We go for a half-pot bet. We're going to fight any club on the turn. We fold, that's okay. Queens, this guy donks. I think we can just give up straight away on queens. Ace eight of spades. I'm going to ice raise for a min sizing just because of the effective stacks here. I don't want to like overextend myself and ice it to 4x. It doesn't make sense. Probably slightly better just to keep the stack to pot ratio post lock kind of high. This guy min 3 bets. Still going to be cooling, obviously. So today's on the button. Pretty good proposition in this game. Especially 4 way. This is a great spot to be in. Fought the backdoor flush. Let's see what people do. Before we make a decision, we might be able to continue, we might not. Really depends what the action is. I think against a 12 cents bet, we should probably continue, especially if other people call. But it's, yeah, I think we just have to call here. Although it's, it could be a slightly losing call. It's definitely possible. I don't think it's going to be hugely losing. Might be slightly better to fall, actually. I would probably say falling is correct, actually, if I played the hand again. It does, of course, depend on the size of the mistakes players are likely to make on later streets. You know, if I do hit the runner on a flush and they stack off every time, then, you know, maybe I should still do that. And it looks like they possibly would stack off every time, but we don't want to be too results-oriented, you know, just because one guy had a set and the other guy had a straight. We don't want to be too results-oriented about the spot. King 8, easy fold from cutoff. And I'm going to complete the suited jack. I feel a lot happier about the suited jack than I do about stuff like ace 10 offsuit in this spot. I'm more confident that this is going to be a profitable small like complete. Although, I'm not a big fan of the stack sizes, actually. But the price we get pre-flop is obviously insane. Exactly the same as it is in the limit hold which you could complete quite a lot here. We have two pair. I'm just going to check it down. Obviously, any diamond beats us, so it's not quite good enough to bluff catch. We even folded some straights in this kind of spot in previous sessions. This guy has a flush, more than likely. Um, I think I'm going to raise... The king nine, fold the jack seven. Now, one thing we know about Gatsby A is that in one of the previous sessions he flopped a full house, and then he slow played the turn. I don't know whether he slow played as a trap, whether it's because he was scared. I think it was because he was actually scared, because there was a possible flush out there. But he definitely seems to be on the passive side. 
So that's probably something that we can exploit. We just have to be a bit more careful in terms of, you know, he can show up with a strong hand at any time, presumably, because he likes to slow play a lot. Screen name seems similar. I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence. I kind of assumed he was a reg from his screen name. But I'm not sure where I remember the screen name from. It could be someone completely different. Maybe he's a fish. I'm not sure. But he does appear to be on more than one table. Usually an indication that someone might be a reg. So I'd kind of I've kind of been working on that assumption. Nine eight suited, pretty good hand in six plus hold'em. I think I'll just call because of the button stack depth, but probably going to be a reasonable three bet as well. And normally I would three x the jack nine, but I'm going to min raise again. We've got the same guy behind us on both tables, so it's unfortunate. It kind of shuts down a lot of our three betting action, but that's just the way the game goes. It's not really that viable to leave the table and get on other tables just because. You know, there's only a few tables running at any given time. Okay, so I guess we just bet the flop here for protection. And again, it's one of those spots where if we take it down, that might even be the highest EV thing that can happen. It's not a big deal if we get cool, but you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that can happen on the turn. There's a chance we're beat already. You know, we know this guy can slow play stuff. So, ironically, we are value betting, but we actually like it when we get folds in the spot. I think the hand's just about good enough to bet for protection again. I think with the jack nine, we should bet here. Because remember, despite the three out, three eights being out there, our backdoor flush is actually still live, unlike how it would be in Hold'em. And you know, that's like a brutal river card here, and there's no good reason to bet in my opinion, but we're going to lose most of the time in this river. Yeah, I mean, whatever, we got two streets of value, that's fine, sucks out in the river, that's okay, all of the money went in when we had the best hand, so it's going to be clearly plus EV exchange for us. I think, jack nine, there's little to zero chance I have the best hand here with jack nine. I'm just going to give up. So I'll just see what other tables are available in the lobby. Uh, I think with 610, let's just uh, mix in some higher stakes tables just for a bit of interest. I think I'll have to sit out on one of the other tables though, just to keep it fun. We're gonna move up in stakes a little bit. Um, let's see what table we should sit out on. So this is an important skill. It doesn't matter whether you're playing Nolim or Hold'em or whether you're playing 6+. plus. It really doesn't matter. You should know which table you should want to sit out on. And, you know, I'm going to go with the one that has the most short stacks. It seems a pretty reasonable place to start. Um, so I'd say the bottom right, well, they will have way too many short stacks. Um, so let's see which one has the most. Top left table looks pretty bad. And top right table doesn't look as bad but still it's kind of bad bottom I mean yeah I mean I'm not gonna leave the bottom right but any of the others I'll happily sit out on so I'm a little bit undecided I think I'll leave the top left table I don't want to leave the top right one because that doesn't have the reg on it so I'm gonna stay on that one just sit our next big blind here. This Ron bug I could easily be a reg as well, actually. So we flop top two here. Usually you should still value bet twice with top two in most cases. But beware the raise. It's so easy for two pads to beat in this game. Sevens. Now we have to set mine in this spot. It's just mandatory set mine. Flop's terrible, so we're going to give up. 
Okay, he's gonna get this table ready to take over. Just play these nines. And then I'll sit out. Yeah, the sevens, I think it's just bad enough where giving up's your only decent play. There's, I think we literally have the worst possible hand actually. I don't think there's any hand that's weak in this apart from sixes. Um, so pretty easy give up here. Nines we're going to play, obviously. Jack eight is a fold. Ten eight. I think I'm probably just going to be folding these hands even if I get the opportunity to complete. But like any two suited, I'll definitely play. Um, nines is good enough for a raise UTG. And again, like I don't like the pot size. Probably has a straight or a set. I don't think nines is going to be good enough to defend there. Just hang around and see what he has. Okay, pocket nines, we open raise, flop's bad, just gonna check fold. Seven nine. Okay, this is on the ten NL table now. I'm just gonna leave this table. Looks like it's breaking, I guess that was the fish. So I'm I've left the table now, so no one's interested, they can't take my stack anymore. I'm gonna move up, lose some more money at high limits. Ten seven offsuit, no fold seven eight offsuit standard fold. I uh, just have to mentally adjust to the fact we're playing two limits, but I'm pretty sure that seven eight isn't easy to defend against a min ISO in this case. I think it's unlikely the original limp is going to re-raise, but the other guy re-raises. I think it's still pretty easy to continue here with the seven eight. And again, it's a pretty reasonable flop. Although we could be dominated by some hands. Queens obviously going to go for a raise here. And this is basically the nuts, just because I think he would fall about aces pre, so obviously just going to bet. And okay, he could have the flush, but I don't think he has it in often enough to stop me over betting. So I'm just going to over bet, good for him if he has the flush. It, it's, it's, it's possible, but you know, he's got ace nine, so... Normally you should be careful over betting in that spot, and I wouldn't over bet the stacks with deeper, but basically the hand's just going to play the best way with an over bet there, I would, I would imagine. So even though it's not typically a good spot to over bet, since he can have flushes in his range, so I wouldn't over bet with additional stack depth, but I think I can get away with it there. I'm just going to play according to pot odds. You know, I'm not super interested to play a big pot here just because I have the 8 high spade draw, which is still very likely going to be the best hand if I complete it by the river. Okay, so let's think. I have five outs in this game. So I'm going to hit about 15% of the time. I'd be investing 150 into a pot of about 650. So, and I could, I'm going to make a tight fold here, but it might just about be a pot odds call. I'm just not super sure about the implied for the river. So I'm just going to make a, a tightish fold. Um, I wouldn't fold if I had the nut draw in that case, which would have meant I would also have a pair of aces. So I wouldn't fold those kind of hands, but um, I think it's close-ish. Definitely pretty reasonable argument for calling there. We'd be investing about 25% of the pot. Um, well, actually, it, maybe it's a little bit of a long shot specifically, because in, in 6+, plus we only have 15% chance to hit on the river. Whereas if regular hold'em, we'd have like 18% chance. So maybe it's a little bit of a long shot to call, actually. This guy three bets, and I'm just going to fold the flop right away. He probably has aces or kings and thinks it's the nuts, which it isn't. Jack seven from the cutoff. It's not quite an open. In fact, even jack eight's a fold, so jack nine suited is okay, and so is ten eight suited, but not jack seven suited. Jack seven. I'm just gonna bet the flop just because he checked. Which might not sound like a very good reason, but 
It actually is if you analyze it. Now I'm gonna give up mostly. Could spike a nine. Um, it's very unlikely to have the best hand. Is he good enough to fold two pair? I'm not sure. I'm just gonna check back. Expect to lose mostly. And he has a set, so there's no way he's folding a set. Queen seven. I should overcall against the min raises here. Flop trips, which is pretty good, although, you know, my kick is not fantastic or anything. Ron Burr is a reg, so I don't know how good he is, but, well, I assumed he was a reg. Although I do this sometimes, so just because he min bets doesn't mean he's not a reg. Um, now I want to raise, obviously, against his sizing, but I am interested to see whether they 3-bet or whether they just give up. I don't think I can bet too big here as a result of my kicker, but notice that I do actually have the nut flush draw now, which means it is very hard for barreling not to be profitable. I don't actually open ace 10 offsuit in a small blind. It's not part of my opening strategy, so I'm just going to stick to my default ranges here and fold. Again, if you're from a no limit holding background, that might seem like it's super tight, like, you know, why are we folding that hand? Just because it's nowhere near as good in 6 plus. Ace queen. And you'd normally isol isolate this in no limit hold'em, but six plus. It's probably okay to complete. I'm gonna lead because I have the back doors. And I don't turn a back door, so I'm just gonna give up now. The hand's pretty weak now on this particular turn card. I'm just gonna give up. No good reason to continue there. Queen eight is weak enough that I'm just gonna check fold the whole way. Jack 9 should be a button open. It's not super good that these guys don't have proper stacks though. In fact, it's not a great table to be on. Maybe there's a better table. Let's see if we can get on another one of these 10 and tables maybe. I think I should see bit that flop though. Have a pair, have the backdoor flush, and some fold equity. So, should work out. Definitely at least plus EV. Jacks, pretty standard open. Yeah, unfortunately, there is only one 10 and L table running, so. You know, if I could play more 10 and L tables, and I might do, but. Most of the action still is staying at the low limit games. Um, there's no uh, 50 cent one dollar running. There's no 25.50, so um, we couldn't play these games even if we wanted to. So this is the best we can do actually, and this is like literally the highest stakes we could be playing right now. So it's still, you know, it's still a newish variant. So the action is not going to be super high just yet, but there's a chance it blows up sometime in the future. And when it does, or if it does, then it's good to be one of these guys that's actually better than everyone else. Um, yeah. So there's 20 nl, 50 nl, 100 nl. But none of the games are running right now. Um, there's four cent, two cent, four cent, and there's ten and L. And this is literally the only ten and L table running right now. And it's not super early. Okay, it's not quite peak time, so I would imagine. In fact, I'm pretty sure there was some fifty and L and hundred and L games running yesterday. There weren't many. I think there was like one table on each limit or something. That was like in peak times. Here, I'm just gonna bet as a bluff, draw protection with my sevens. He has like one table running in peak times. Right now, it's not super early in the morning. It's somewhere in between lowest traffic and highest traffic. And there's no 50 and 100 and games running. Uh, I probably wouldn't have bet the sevens if, if I'd seen it was three way. I actually thought it was a heads up pot. Um, probably would have actually just, um, just checked. Okay, so 6 9. You can use these hands. I mean, although I've been ranting a lot about how I don't like OESDs in this game, if you're pretty sure your opponent doesn't have a set, and he'll usually let you know if he does then they can be pretty good hands to actually use as semi-bluffs just because they do hit so frequently. You just have to be very cautious. They're not very good hands to cool bets with, but they may be okay hands to semi-bluff with. If Because, you know, if you're betting your opponent's just calling down, that means he basically does not have a set usually. He'd probably raise those. Um, you know, pretty good flop for us with the ace-queen. Obviously going to be at least two barreling because we're drawing to more or less a stone-cold nuts. In fact, I think it is just a stone cold nuts draw we have there, so 
seven nine I think we can fold sevens I'll go for a small ISO seven eight you know throughout the the series so far I've been saying that this is questionable EV I'm gonna start folding actually and defend any suited hand that's not necessarily based on any maths it's just based on intuition I don't think the EV of calling will be super low or anything just because the price we get is insane okay ace nine standard open but there's a chance of slightly losing. I'm really not sure. Whereas I can almost guarantee that completing any suited hand will make money in this particular variant. It's just so hard for it to not make money. So I think that's going to be my strategy. Okay, so three way. We have the back door. I find it hard to get the bet sizing I want. Actually, I want it 60, but it jumps from 50 to 70. Kings, standard open. So yeah, I'm just going to fire here. I'm going to barrel any spade on the turn. I'm going to give up on... More or less any other card. I think Queen 8 I can fold based on the opener stack size. Look. Okay, um This guy's never shoved before. And Kings is not anywhere near as good in six plus as it is in No Limit. So I'm gonna make a fold here. There's a chance there's a plus EV call, but the truth is there's a chance he's only shoving aces against me. And even if I'm wrong and he shows up with Queens there or Ace King. I kind of feel that it's going to be pretty close against the overall range, and I have just a big edge post flop, I think, at the moment. So I'm just going to pass up an opportunity, save myself some variance. I'm not sure how profitable that call is in this variant. And, you know, Kings is not as good in 6 plus as it is in No Limit. It probably still is a call usually in that spot, though. Probably is correct to make the call. I'm just not sure how profitable it will be against this specific range. I think he's a reg just because he's on a bunch of different tables. And there's a chance he's only shoving aces, but that doesn't make too much sense either. Why would he just shove aces? I'm not too sure. I mean, he's obviously not very good reg either way because he's never shoved before and he just randomly shoves, so I'm not really 100% sure what that means. Okay, I'll play King-10 here, but again, I didn't see it's three-way actually. Based on my former strategy advice, I'd probably just fold this hand, actually is maybe the best play here. And I'm just going to give up post-flop. Nine seven suited from small blinds is a standard open. Nine six suited is not though. If I was playing Nolim at Hold'em, I'd definitely bluff this river spot with the King-10. And I don't think I have a good reason to think that it's not still a good bluffing spot, but this guy beats me to it, so I'm going to fold. Now, heads up, 6 plus Hold'em. And you probably will find you end up playing a reasonable amount of heads up, 6 plus Hold'em, if you want to try the limit, just because, you know, tables are breaking all the time. So, again, I take some of the strategy concepts from Non-Limit Hold'em, and I'm going to start by raising um, any two on the button. You know, I'll flop an okay flop, which is two pair. Obviously, all of the hand strength gets shifted up. So two pair is not great in six plus hold'em, but heads up, it's an okay hand where you should be trying to get value. Um, that's a pretty bad turn card. I'm still going to bet for protection because I have top pair, but I'm just going to give up after this now. Ace eight of hearts, definitely go for an ISO. He folds, so that's a very good outcome actually in this case. So, you know, I'm pretty happy to play heads up. You know, I think this guy's a reg, but I'd be surprised. I mean, not that my understanding of this game is, is that good. It's not. It's pretty bad. But I already think I know a lot more about this particular variant than pretty much anyone else who's playing at the moment. So I'm happy to just play heads up against anyone. And this is not because I'm such a good player. I'm not. It's just because everyone else is terrible and don't really understand the variant as well as they should yet. Okay, he doesn't want to play me. Sad face. Where's my sad face? I guess I used the stone cat face now. Just gonna chill out while I wait for someone to join the games. A6, pretty easy overcall. Okay, so remember that even on the paired board, this is basically the nut draw now, unless someone has quads, which is not that likely, even in 6 plus hold'em. 
So I'm not going to fold this hand. It, like if I hit my flush, I'm never going to fold. Doesn't matter too much if they have quads or something. Oh, more heads up action. And again, this is really straightforward call because we hit our set 18% in this variant. Pretty bad flop, so we'll just give up. He checks though, which is interesting. I kind of, I kind of feel like this is how people would probably play stuff like Ace King. So I'm just gonna put a small protection bet there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Just make a small bet. Okay, um, now we have a full house. I think we can value bet though. I, I think he has Ace King, Ace Jack, probably. Be surprised if he played quads like this. I guess he could have Ace Ten. That might make sense. King Ten. Okay. All right. And you know, I'm, I'm the outcome is fine. Like I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that because I think he has stuff like Ace Jack in his range. Um, and if he does have some 10x, which you know I think he does have some 10x, I don't lose that much because of the sizing that I've used. So, okay, Jacks, I'm gonna fold. Here, I'm gonna just keep on min raising every button and seeing what happens post flop. I think with the backdoor flush draw and the OESD, I'm just gonna go for a semi bluff and this texture. Jacks, standard button open. Okay, I make the straight. Now this is not like a super, super duper great value hand um, in this variant. But it's definitely a hand that should be betting. Like checking is not a good play either. Watch out for the check raise, obviously. Um, I would say good for him if he's bad enough to check raise a 9x. I think it's more likely he has a set or he has jack 9 or something. So I'm just going to give up immediately. Um, okay, I was I see my time max triggered automatically. I, I just kind of acted on instinct here. So I had another pair I raised. Okay, I mean this guy... This guy has enough draws where I have to raise the turn, in my opinion. And again, if he three bets, that's fine. He can have the pot. Okay, flush draw here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be double barreling, even though this is one of the weaker combos. Okay, he raises. He three bets. Like he he has me beat here. Um, I think just triple barrel with a nine six. I'd be surprised if he check raises again. He folds. Ace King, I've been folding this combo. If you've watched the early videos, you'll know why by now, hopefully. I don't think it's a standard open. But, you know, obviously he's strong enough to play heads up. Might even be a 3 bet heads up. You know, 10 to 4 3 betting Ace King suited, though, I think. This is an OK combo to lead, OK combo to check. Okay, I think we're losing some of the tables, so what we're going to do is, uh, before the next part of the series, we're just going to get back on some tables hopefully so we've got enough action running uh, once again if you have any questions about how i've played these hands or about six plus hold'em in general then feel free to leave some comments for me thanks very much for watching hope you have the best of luck at the six plus hold'em tables this has been weasel for pokervip.com in association with william hill poker